Oh, Veronica's already. Let's make Veronica co host. Yes. Good. Hi, Lori. Great to see you. Amy, Elizabeth, Jennifer, June, Lee, Sherry, Tori. Great to see you all. Uh, we have one minute till the top of the hour. So uh, let me just get everything adjusted here. Great to see you all. Hi, everybody. It's Sam Bennett from therealsambennett.com. And welcome to this, our weekly Facebook Live in which I um, try to give you some little tips and strategies so that you can have more of a life you want and less of a life that you don't want. Let's take a minute to um, breathe. And uh, in this moment, let's also uh, bring peace into our hearts and send loving thoughts and messages to uh, those who are at war, um, either uh, in the world or within their own minds, right? So move yourself around in your chair just a little bit. Um, this will just remind you that um, this is not a regular Zoom. This is not a meeting. This is not the rest of your day. This is a special time for you to uh, focus on what matters to you, for you to get inspired, for you to get motivated, for you to be doing uh, or not doing in a way that's going to make your life more meaningful because tomorrow is promised to none of us. If you want a meaningful life, you have to make it meaningful today. You have to make it meaningful right now. So shifting around in your chair, bringing some awareness to your, your body, your physical self, the shape you make in the world. Um, we spend so much time criticizing the way we look, or I spend, well, I do, I don't know if you do. Uh, let's take this moment to think loving thoughts about this body that carries us around and loves us so well and works so hard for us all the time. Let your belly go really soft, poochie poochie soft. Ah. You ready? Let's inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It feels so good, doesn't it? Do you feel that shift in your state of being? I want to remind you this power is available to you always. You can always take a breath, recenter, recalibrate. Right? Shit's going to happen. The world's going to happen. We can't control most of what's going on out there, but we can control most of what's going on in here. And the breathing is a great way to do that. I know a lot of you have adopted it as a, as a daily strategy, as an hourly strategy, and that makes me very happy. I was talking to my tax guy recently. He's like, oh yeah, I, I do that all the time. <laughs> um, uh, and he remembers me doing it from our theater company days. That's how I know my tax guys. We were in a theater company together. Um, hi, Lucy, Amy, so glad to catch you live for once. I'm so glad you can be here live too. That's exciting. Um, and you all know these get posted here in the in the Facebook group. And I think also um, uh, we've started posting them on YouTube too. So if there's ever one that you particularly love or want to see again um, or want to share with a friend, uh, you can absolutely do that. Um, a special welcome to Veronica and to Lucy, my incredibly valuable team members. I'm the luckiest person in the world. My team is outstanding, just so on the ball, so gifted, so talented, so kind and generous. My friend, Clayt Mask, who's the CEO of Keep, which is of course used to be Infusionsoft, it's the email marketing system that we use. Uh, Clayt was giving a keynote one time that I saw and he said, hire and fire exclusively to core values. 
hire and fire exclusively to core values. He's like, don't worry about skill sets. You can, people can learn. <laughs> you can teach people to do whatever it is you need them to do, but you cannot teach people to be kind. You cannot teach people to be generous. You cannot teach them to be selfless. You cannot teach them to have a great sense of humor. <laughs> you have to find those things first. And um, I'm so fortunate that everyone on my team has a great sense of humor, is incredibly bright, innovative, supportive, loving. Um, you know, and when you have really great people like that, it just makes everything so much easier. I, I know a lot of you struggle with, you know, delegating or bringing on a BA or bringing on a team member or even hiring a housekeeper because you feel like, oh, nobody's going to do it as good as me. Believe me, they're going to do it way better than you. Um, hi, Gail. Great to see you. Uh, and it just frees up so much stuff. I, I was doing a I can't remember if I told you guys this or not. I don't think I did. I was doing a podcast interview with a guy who, first of all, he lives in Tepetzalan, Mexico, which is where my mother lives. He lives in the same teeny tiny town in Mexico that my mother lives in, which is just so rando. Um, and he has a podcast that he does in English, mostly for Germans. <laughs> so uh, he was interviewing me and, it, and he had found me through my one of my LinkedIn courses, one of my very popular LinkedIn, my, the most popular LinkedIn course, which is called How to Stop Wasting Time in Meetings. And uh, he said, you know, he started out by saying, oh, I've got a lot of questions for you about, you know, how to run great meetings. But first I want to ask you, Sam, how much time do you spend in meetings? And I said, we have one team meeting that lasts about 90 minutes every two weeks, twice a month. And it was like, Boom, mic drop. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, no, no. I do not waste time in meetings. I hire great people. We communicate a lot on base camp, but we do not spend a lot of time sitting around in meetings. Absolutely not. Um, so special. Well, well, thank you all for, for being here in person. This is really lovely that you're able to, um, to be here. If you have a question, you can put it into the chat or put it into the Facebook chat and uh, Veronica will repost it here for me so I can see it. Um, I wanna give a big woo woo to the people that get it done lab. We are just about halfway through, I think. I didn't actually check the, the, the date number today, but we're just about halfway through our 90 day productivity sprint. And it's very uh, exciting to see what's developing for people, particularly people who are doing it for the second time around. Um, getting new insights, getting uh, new, um, hitting new, 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 that's what I'm looking for, like, uh, not landmarks, benchmarks, you know, new, new, hitting new goals. Um, and, uh, and, you know, if you're in Get It Done Lab and you've fallen off the wagon, that's what wagons are for, is to get back on, right? Hi, Aubrey, great to see you. And look who else came by. Who's this? Is this Mittable or Archie? It's Archie. Hi, baby. This is beautiful, Archie. Milestones. Thank you, Amy. Yes, that's what I was looking for. Milestones. <laughs> Yesterday, the cat, the kittens, I gotta stop calling them kittens because they're huge. You can see. Um, they were, <laughs> they're twins, right? So they were sleeping, they were sleeping and fighting at the same time. <laughs> so they were curled up next to each other, and Archie would like go, ah, and the head of Bill would be like, huh. <laughs> It'd like sort of tussle for a second and then fall back asleep. It was the cutest thing ever. Uh, <clears throat> great to see you all. Um, so I got asked to uh, do a blurb for a book. My publisher asked me to do a blurb for a, a book, um, which is one of the fun things about being an author is that people ask you to, you know, uh, write things for, um, you get to read other people's books, which is cool. Uh, hi, Leslie. Leslie says, these Thursdays are very helpful and healing for those of us feeling challenged by post-COVID reentry. Dude, tell me all about it, right? I mean... It's so rocky, right? Um, yeah, this is a great time to be very, very loving to yourself. Um, and if I can help in any way, you know I'm delighted to. So, and y'all, if you are in anywhere near um, uh, Desert Hot Springs, right? Palm Desert, Desert Hot Springs. Um, Leslie basically single-handedly created a labyrinth walk at her church. Um, so if you're looking for peace and healing, you can find it at the, Leslie, go ahead and put the, put the, put the name of it in. It's the, the Unitarian Church there, I think, right? Um, 
but amazing, amazing. It was one of her get it done projects was she wanted to create this labyrinth. And so she did, she got all the donations, she got all the concrete, she got it designed, she got it made, it's there forever now. How about that? How about that? Um, so I got asked to review this book, Someday is Today by Matthew Dix. And um, it's, it's good, it's about, you know, it's about how to get more done, how to, Sacred Grounds Initiative. There we go, thank you very much. Uh, LeslieGebhart.com. Or, uh, forward slash sacred dash grounds. Yeah, great. Thank you, Leslie. And if you wanted to donate to donate to the ongoing maintenance of that project, that's a great place to throw a little money, right? Um, <clears throat> and it's interesting to see, you know, he and I say a lot of the same things. I also write a lot about time management and productivity and how to get more done and how to get more of what matters done. Because as we all know, productivity is not about getting more done. It's about getting more of what matters done. No one needs to add more stuff to their plate. They just need to do the things that actually matter. So when you get to the end of the day, you can go, okay, move the needle. Okay, check the box. Okay, made some progress, right? Perceived progress is key to happiness um, and life satisfaction, right? And, you know, almost everything we, we know about end of life is that people say, gosh, I really wish I had spent more time doing what mattered to me and less time of what I thought mattered to other people. Uh, the book is called Someday is Today by Matthew Dix, D-I-C-K-S. I don't believe it's out yet. Um, it's in pre-publication. So that's, that's why they're, that's why I have to read it because they're putting the blurbs on the back of the book. You know how they do that? Um, and if you've ever wondered how people get blurbs on the back of the book, either the author asks people they know or the publisher asks other authors in that person's same genre to do it and we do it as favors to each other um plus it's fun so yeah someday is today by matthew dix and like i said we say very much the same you know there's there's only so, there's only so much advice you can give right there's only so many uh tips and tricks out there uh so we say very much the same kinds of things but we say it in slightly different ways which is as you know another piece of my favorite one of my favorite pieces of of uh uh, advice is, um, it's all been said before, but not by you, right? It's all been said before, but not by you. If Matthew read Get It Done, he would probably say, oh, gosh, she says a lot of the same things I do. You know, maybe, maybe nobody wants my book. No, no. He, he says a lot of the same things I do, but in a totally different way, with a totally different spin. And even I am reading it going like, oh, that's a good idea. That's a good suggestion. Veronica put the uh, link to Amazon link to Someday is Today uh, up there. You can, uh, it's an affiliate link, so you will receive pennies, pennies and referral fees from Amazon. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you ever want to do an author a favor, pre order their book. Um, so he says, like, here's some of the things that he and I both say. Like, he talks about, we both talk about what's important, right? And he talks about um, his hundred year old self. Like what will matter to him a hundred years from now? Um, you know, if he's, you know, going to be 140, uh, or however old he is, uh, you know, what will he look back on now that will matter, right? Um, and he tells a story about, uh, oh, and she also put a link to get it done. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, if you don't have a copy of Get It Done, to get that for sure. Kindle, hard copy, Audible. I narrate both these books on Audible. So both get it done and start right where you are. It's funny when people listen to it on Audible, my personal trainer uh, that I was working with a couple of years ago got it. I walked into the gym and she's like, you are in my head. <laughs> she's like, I've been listening to you so much. I'm like, oh, thanks. It's just where I want to be, inside your head. Um, so he talks about this, this hundred, you know, what will matter to you a hundred years from now. And, um, and I tend, I, I move the, move it a lot closer. I say, what's your slightly future self? What did, what you three months from now, you six weeks from now, what will the slightly future version of you thank you for doing today? Right. He says, what will your hundred year old self? And he says, it's why he, you know, anytime his daughter asks to be carried, even though she's 12 and, you know, kind of tall for her age, uh, he, and he's got a torn rotator cuff. He always says, yes, I will carry you because he knows that when he gets to the end of his life, he's, he's gonna wish he had more time to carry her, right? That she's not gonna ask for that for very much longer. And um, 
know, same thing when he, uh, uh, when his son wants to play, you know, whatever, some dumb game that he doesn't really care about, but he loves spending time with his son. So he will always make time for that. Um, <clears throat> Laurie says, I loved listening to Sam as I walked and did get a major project done because of it. Yay, thank you, Laurie. Um, yes, Robin says, yes, pre-order books. Robin, I am so proud of you getting becoming a published author. It's so exciting to see, just delightful. Billy would be very proud of you too. Um, so we, so this is a handy little metric if you don't have this already in, as part of your decision-making process, like what would your slightly future self or your very future self thank you for doing today? Um, he also talks about, and I, um, I talk about 15 minutes a day, right? Just finding these little, getting a little bit done every day. He might, he, he shrinks it down even less. He's like, when he's waiting for his kids to get their shoes on and stuff, he'll write three sentences for his, you know, for his new book. Um, he, uh, you know, any tiny little pocket of time he has, he spends on something that matters to him, usually writing books. Um, and he tells a great story actually, about uh, there was a woman who wanted to be a writer and wanted to pick his brain and uh, have coffee with him. So he said yes, uh, as a favor. And she had all kinds of questions about, you know, contracts and marketing and agents and publishers and stuff. And finally, he said, so, you know, how, how's your book coming? You know, how's the writing coming? And she said, oh, I haven't started yet. You know, I just don't have the time, uh, but I'm, I really wanna be prepared for when I start writing. And he said, let me show you something. Um, he said, you know, you were, you were five minutes late to this, to this coffee. And she starts to go, oh, I'm so sorry. And he's like, no, 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 I, that doesn't matter. I, it, he says, but look, here on my computer, while you, in the five minutes I was waiting for you, I wrote, you know, four sentences and I revised these two sentences. It's like, there's always time to write. You just have to be writing. Um, and I thought that was pretty great. I thought that was pretty great. I love, I love that idea of just like sneaking in little, little bits, you know, you don't have to have an hour and a half at the gym to work out. You could just, you know, do, 10 sit-ups right now and then you know do 10 push-ups later um, while you're waiting for the tea water to boil or something um i have a friend who's in her she's uh, in her 70s uh we sing in choir together and she told me one time about how she does a wall sit when she's brushing her teeth she does a wall sit so she does a wall, two minute wall sit twice a day when she's brushing her teeth I'm like that'll keep your legs strong that'll keep your core tight like that's great right doubling up on things um so yeah, so what little pockets of time, you know, when you're maybe, you know, in line at the grocery store or I don't know, any place. Actually, in line at the grocery store, I like to actually talk to other human beings. It's so rare these days. <laughs> uh, Amy says, my rheumatologist told me a few years ago, every step counts. Exactly, exactly. Um, he also talks about what I call get a C, right? No need to get an A plus on everything. Just get a C, get it done, get it out there. He also talks about that, but he doesn't use the phrase get a C. He just says, no one cares. <laughs> no one's watching, no one cares. Um, you know, so, you know, fussing, making things perfect with things that don't matter. You know, he, he uh, Robert says, I do squats while my tea is steeping. Excellent, very good, yes. Um, uh, and, you know, lately, um, my workout has been what, what we call super slow. I don't know why this is not the most popular workout in the world, because um, it only takes half an hour. And it's just like a regular workout. You do squats and wall sits and um, uh, uh, sit-ups and kettlebell, some stuff with kettlebells. Um, but you do it super slow, right? So a push-up is like one, two, three, four. Go. two, three, four. It's super hard, um, but it's very satisfying. And there's some exercise physiology reason why you can do it for just half an hour and it has the same effect of working out for a much longer time. I don't know what that science is. I read the book, couldn't tell you a thing about it. Um, Mary Beth Hayes, uh, Sam, love that you sing in a choir. Any suggestions where I might join one? I'm in Ventura. Um, yeah, I actually, um, uh, I haven't been lately, but I've been singing, I sing in a choir, a church choir in Van Nuys, uh, at Church of the Valley. 
in Van Nuys, California, which is about an hour from, from Ventura. And um, quick hop on a Sunday morning, not, not a pleasant drive. And uh, it's one of those super open and affirming, we love everybody, um, disciples of Christ to churches. So it's, it's, a very, um, it's a very joyful place to be. Uh, and I, I love going to church because it's um, a place where it's okay to not be okay. It's a place where I make friends who are 20 years older than me, 40 years older than me, 40 years younger than me. Um, and, uh, and it gives me a chance to sing, which is super fun. So that's, that. so yeah, come, come, come hit up Church of the Valley. Um, Luke, who's my person, my partner, my husband-ish, because we're married-ish, uh, he is the musical director for the band there. So, uh, and they're always looking for people to play in the band. So uh, you can go and check out Meet Luke and check out the choir. Church of the Valley, Van Nuys, California. Fun for the whole family. Okay. Um, but yeah, he's talking about all this stuff that doesn't even matter. He's like, you know, he talks about it. He teaches elementary school. He's like, you know, the elementary school teacher who's like making all her worksheets super perfect. He's like, no one cares. They're elementary school students. Two minutes from now, no one's gonna notice this. You know, um, he doesn't, you know, he wears the same thing every day. He wears a t-shirt and jeans every day. Um, wears the same shoes every day. And he's like, cause no one, notices what you're wearing. No one cares. Like, you know, uh, there's a beautiful neologism, neologism, a new word uh, called sonder, S-O-N-D-E-R. And it's a, a word meant to, to describe how you are a background player in everybody else's movie, right? You're starring in your own movie. You think everything's about you because you're in here, right? You're the one in the, in, you know, in the spotlight inside of your own mind. But to everybody else, you are just a background player. You're an extra, right? Maybe a recurring character, but not really. They're not thinking about you. They're not noticing. So, you know, don't spend time making things perfect that absolutely do not need to be perfect or don't even need to be adequate, right? Uh, Laurie says, if you lived in Victoria, I'm hiring a music director for our church. Well, that's a great opportunity. Too bad we don't live in Victoria. Um, <clears throat> um, he also talks about making trade-offs that matter. Um, he and his wife both teach uh, at an elementary school and they bought a house five minutes away. He's like, and is it the best house we could have bought? No, but the, he's like, I've got friends who drive, you know, half an hour a day each way. That's an hour. It's like, that's an hour that I could be writing, that I could be with my kids, that I could be, you know, doing something I love. Uh, um, what other trade-offs do you talk about? Um, and then he also talks about automating, automate decision-making, which is something else I talk about quite a bit, right? Don't stop paralyzing yourself with choice. Um, just make one decision one time, right? Have automatic withdrawals, go to your savings account, go to your um, retirement accounts, have, um, you know, doing the thing like the wall sit while you're brushing your teeth, like just make that automatic. Um, he talks about one time his doctor was get, getting concerned about his cholesterol. Um, and he said, well, what, what can I do? And the doctor said, well, you know, there's, the, he gave him a pamphlet or something. And one of the things in the pamphlet was eat oatmeal. So that day he started eating oatmeal for lunch every single day. And not only is it quick and easy to make and eat and cheap and filling, uh, but his cholesterol numbers were way down a year later. Um, and he never has to think about what am I gonna order for lunch? <laughs> he just frees that up. Um, yes, Robin says, you're making my heart sing. COV, Church of the Valley. Yes, that's one of the ways Robin and I know each other. That's from Church of the Valley. Um, so, yeah, so we really, and that, so anyway, reading this book, and I'm not quite done with it, but reading this book is just really reminding me how much, how many little tiny things, little micro decisions we can make, um, little baby steps, you know, how much we underestimate those baby steps, the power of those baby steps, and how much we freak ourselves out by, you know, oh, writing a book, like, oh, it's so overwhelming. Well, it's just words on a page. You know, the more words you get on a page, the closer you get to having written a book. Um, 
you know, Luke has uh, been uh, singing more. He started to, he actually started taking some voice lessons. And so over the course of the day, he'll just sit down at the piano and do noodle around and do scales for, you know, two minutes. Um, and he is in fact, you know, increasing his range and his, and his um, you know, really seeing results. His voice teacher was super impressed, you know, in the two weeks time between his first and second lesson. She was like, wow, you really made some real progress. He practiced like in two minute increments though. He didn't, you know, a lot, a whole day do it. Um, so, what, what was, uh, oh, like I wrote down a few other ones that I do. I don't know if he's gonna get to some, some of these or not. I have a rule that I never leave a room empty handed. I don't know where I learned this. It must have been my must have been my mother, <laughs> but um, like anytime I'm going from one room to another, I will like bring the teacup back to the kitchen, bring the recycling out to the th like pick something up and take it back to where it belongs. Um, I find this to be a very easy way to keep things more or less in order. Um, my friend, uh, I have a friend who uh, grew up in a very small town and didn't get the world's greatest education in that small town. Um, oh my gosh, so my desk looks out over a field and a bunny just right across the field. Hello, bunny. Um, uh, so we always felt a little self-conscious about, you know, not having a great grounding in the classics of American literature. So uh, he walks every day and he started listening to books on, you know, books on tape, audio books. Um, while he walks, he's listened to all of Mark Twain. He's listened to all of Charles Dickens. He's listened to all of a um, uh, fair bit of Shakespeare, um, which is just a wonderful way to double up on two things that are good for you. Uh, the link to the YouTube posts, that's a great question. Um, I bet Veronica can find that because I don't think I know. Oh, I know where it is though. Oh, please, your call is important to us. Um, oh, it's not there. Okay, never mind. Sorry, Veronica will find it. Um, otherwise, you can just Google, you just type into uh, Samantha Bennett. Um, or the real Sam Bennett into YouTube, it should come up. Um, yeah, so that's my, that's my offer to you is just see, think about what little teeny tiny mini bits you can do. Um, <laughs> you have like three YouTube accounts. Let me make sure I'm grabbing the right one. I know. Uh, um, so, uh, but again, they're also, if you join the um, Secrets of Highly Productive People Facebook group, if you're not in that group already, you should absolutely be in that group because it's super fun. Um, and, uh, um, and we post that they stay there too. They live there too. So you can, you can revisit them on that page. Um, yeah, so what little teeny tiny steps can you take today that are gonna make a difference for you? Get you closer to what you want, have, let you get to the end of the day and be like, all right, good on me, right? Um, terrific. So yeah, that's my little commentary on Someday Is Today by Matthew Dix. Um, yes, get it at your local bookseller or uh, order it from your local independent bookseller or get it on Amazon. Um, like I said, it's a pretty, uh, cheerful uh, book and I sort of love his, his the things he decides don't matter. Like I just, it's really refreshing to be like, right, no one cares. He says on any form he fills out with, it says position, um, uh, you know, when he's supposed to write teacher, he writes upright. Like, he's like, for, and no one's ever said anything to him about it. Further proof that like so much of what we do really doesn't matter. No one's paying any attention. Um, oh, there it is. YouTube.com forward slash Samantha Bennett Creative. All one word, Samantha Bennett Creative at YouTube. Uh, Amy says, doing things you love so much, you want to squeeze them in whenever you can and freeing up time and energy by automating decisions. I started a month or so ago ordering pre-made meals from Factor. I just grab one and don't have to worry about making or finding lunch. Right, exactly, exactly. Wonderful to be with you. Thank you so much. Um, if you're not on the email list, make sure you are, join our email list at therealsambennett.com. If um, uh, if you're not in the Facebook group, do that. So we cross pollinate that way. Uh, thank you, Leslie. Thank you, Lee. Great to see you all. Let's do one more breath to 
close out this circle. Are you ready? Let's inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I forgot how to count about halfway through that. <laughs> okay, maybe time for another cup of tea. Thanks so much, everybody. Great to see you all. Big kiss. Bye, cuties. <laughs>